Welcome to In His Presence TV broadcast, where all things are possible. I'm David, and this is my lovely wife, Joanna. We are the Herobedians. So we're going to have a great day today, and God is going to set you free of some things because the subject is exciting. It's entitled, Abstinence versus Deliverance. And you might say to yourself, what's the difference? And I am so glad you asked. Jesus came to set the captive free to deliver those that are bound in any sort of bondage of addiction, affliction. It could be physical. It could be mental. It could be emotional. It could also be spiritual. But today, the Lord is going to come and send his angels right where you're at. So I'm gonna ask my wife to pray as we move into this message, and the atmosphere is gonna change right where you're at. So don't turn that off, but rather tune in and experience what God has for you right where you're at today. Joanna, would you please pray for us? Mm -hmm. So Lord, we thank you for this time. And now, Father, we release your anointing to break every yoke. We release your freedom by the power of your Holy Spirit to break every chain. So, Father, as our brothers and sisters that are watching right now, I pray, Holy Spirit, you touch them with your love. You touch them with truth. Open their eyes to see what they cannot see. Open their ears. And, Father, that by the time they're done watching this broadcast, they will be a different person than when they first sat in front of the television. And we release your angels to go forth into their households to bring forth the will of God, which is freedom from bondage, freedom from every chain, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my love. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in Matthew 15, 13, every plant that hasn't been by my, planted by my heavenly Father shall be rooted up. So anything in you that's not been placed there by God, a loving heavenly Father, Jesus comes to break the bondage and he goes beneath the surface, underneath, and he plucks it up by the roots. If you've ever seen dandelions in a front yard, you know, I'm originally from Missouri and dandelions are everywhere in the summertime and they blow and they spread. And the thing about dandelions is if today you mow them down with a lawnmower, if you come back three days later, they've reappeared again. The only way to get rid of them is to go beneath the root of the surface of the ground and pluck them up by the root. And that's like sin is, or iniquity or bondages or addictions. We can have behavior that's self-help in nature, but we need God's help. And I'm gonna ask my wife to share uh, one of her own personal testimonies because we're sharing the freedom from bondage that's available to every believer. Mm -hmm. It's available to everyone who's not a believer. You may have tuned in, stumbled across this broadcast, but it's not by accident, but rather by divine appointment. And he came to set the captives free. And I'm gonna ask Joanna to share one of her stories so you can know that we're not ministers that just preach deliverance, we're those that have been delivered and we wanna share with others what God has so graciously done for us and he wants to do for mm -hmm. every human being on the planet. Well, so David was talking about roots and where do these roots come from? What is the root of the addiction? What is the root of the pain? Well, there are incidents that happen and occur in different times in our lives. For example, things happen when we're a child or they happen as an adult, trauma. And when those things happen, then roots get grounded in our soul. And Jesus said, I came to set the captive free. I came to break the yoke of bondage. And he's the deliverer. So what we wanna do now is we wanna have the Lord reveal to you the root. For example, I had things happen to me as a little girl and as a, an adult that should never happen to a woman and it was not by my choice. And because of that trauma, roots were created within me. And those roots had lies that were attached to it. Some of those lies that I battled were, was, I'm ugly, 
I'm rejected, I'm a nobody, I hated myself, I had shame, I had guilt, I had condemnation. And so I battled those things. So when I looked in the mirror, I didn't see who I was created in the image of God. I saw who I had was created in the image of trauma. And so it was a process for me to get free. It took a while to get free of those things. And the Lord then began to reveal the lies. That's the first step is you have to understand, you have to know what are the lies you're believing about yourself. Because those lies that you believe about yourself on the inside, that's what drives you to make certain choices and decisions as an adult that then puts you into sin or they put you into iniquity. And so the first step is asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what are the lies that you're believing about yourself. And God gave me a, an exercise to do when he was taking me through that process. He had me write down every lie that I believed about myself. I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I'm really nothing. You know, it was a long list. I had two pages worth of stuff. I couldn't believe it. And so I wrote down all those things. And then the Lord said, okay, now I want you to renounce every single one of those lies and then declare the opposite, which is my word. So for example, where I said I felt ugly and I was saying I was ugly, I said, Lord, I repent of saying and thinking and believing that I'm ugly because I am created in your image and I break those lies and I break the strongholds today in the name of Jesus. And I ask that you give me freedom. So that's what I want to encourage you with today is freedom. Ask those questions of the Lord and ask him to show you how to be set free. Write down those lies and then get delivered from them. Renounce them, repent of them, break agreement with the enemy because God says the opposite. So why do we believe the enemy and not God? David? That's well stated, Joanna. I, I want to share something with you and I want you to look into the screen and I want you to hear this as if it was your Heavenly Father speaking it to you. And, and I want you to know this, God has never, ever, ever, any time, ever had a single bad thought about you. Not one time has He ever had a bad thought about you. He loves you. He's like a, a GPS. When you get off track driving, all He does is say, recalculating and he just gets you back on the track repentance is when he says when possible make a u-turn when possible make a u-turn is God calling you to make a u-turn today to do an about face turn 180 degrees and maybe you've been going the wrong direction maybe it's just an adjustment to get back on track or maybe it's a full u-turn the good news is he's never had a bad thought about you. Now, if he's never had a bad thought about you, how can we afford to allow ourselves to have a bad thought about us? God wants to turn things around for you. Joanna? Mm -hmm. And not only does he want to turn things around, he wants you to know that it wasn't your fault. What happened to you was not your fault. You didn't deserve to get raped. You didn't deserve to get beaten. You didn't deserve to get called names or whatever that happened. And so I want to break that shame. I want to break condemnation off of you. So Lord, right now, I lift up your beloved who's listening to this program right now. And I break off shame. I break off condemnation. I break off that it's their fault. It wasn't your fault. And now I give them permission to heal. I give them permission to be set free of those things by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus covers you today. The blood of Jesus sets you free. So now it's time to receive that and accept that and say, Jesus, I accept that I am free. I am washed clean by your blood because you died for me. So I receive my freedom today that I am white as snow. I'm not tainted, I'm not colored, I'm not coated, I'm not ugly. I am white as snow and I'm beautiful because I'm created in your image and I am set free. So today, Jesus, set me free from these things and heal me and hear me today. Jesus loves you and what happened was not his will for your life. And his will for your life is to be redeemed and restored. Just like he did for me, he wants to do for you. Right, David? That's a great word. 
I was uh, just quick into a scripture. It's out of Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 through 11, and I'm going to read just a portion of it. But some of you might say to yourself, how could I be set free? That simple. How could I be forgiven? Don't I have to work for it? The Bible says that salvation comes by the name of Jesus. There's no other name whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No man goes to the Father except by me. Jesus is the doorkeeper. He was hung up on the cross for your hangups and mine. It's not a matter of what you did. It's a matter of what he's done for you and me on the cross 2,000 years ago. It nullifies the sin debt, his life for yours. It's called the law of exchange. We can come and give him our sin. He gives us his righteousness. We can come give him our pain. He gives us his joy in the place. He will take our heaviness and give us a light yoke in its place. Are you ready for that today? You say, do I deserve it? None of us deserve it, but he did it. And it's the free gift, not of works, lest any man could boast, but the free gift of God. In Zechariah chapter 3, the Bible says this, And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose or resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, hear these words, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Mm -hmm. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy rags, filthy garments, and he stood before the angel. You may feel like you're standing with filthy garments, but in God's perspective, in an instant, things change. Listen to this. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 4, and he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, take away the filthy garments from him. Take away the filthy garments from him, and he said unto him, Behold, I have caused his iniquity to pass from him, and I will clothe him with a change of garments. And I said, Let them set a fair crown upon his head. So they set one upon his head and clothed him with fresh garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by, and the angel of the Lord said unto Joshua, Thus saith the Lord, If you'll keep my ways, walk in my ways, and keep my commandments, you will also judge my house and you'll keep my courts. How quick does God turn it around from you, for you? He just takes off the old with the law of exchange. He takes our sin, our iniquity, our bondages, our problems, our filthy garments, and he gives us brand new ones. Joanna has a word from the Lord I'm just sensing right now. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm seeing, that there's some of you, you've been wearing tattered, ratty looking garments and the Lord wants to replace this today. So Father, I pray right now over your beloved that you would replace and remove those old, worn, tattered garments, raggedy and garments off of your children, Lord. And I pray right now that you deposit the gown of heaven upon your daughter. I pray right now that you deposit the shining armor upon your son right now in the name of Jesus and that they would walk afresh with royalty because you are royalty. The Bible says you are royalty because you are a son and you are a daughter of the king of heaven. And he wants you to begin to walk in your royalty and your identity this day. Father, I pray that when they look in the mirror from this point forward, they will no longer see who they were or what happened in those eyes, but that you give them new eyes today, Lord, to see who they are, new ears to hear the song of heaven that is sung. Zephaniah 3.17 says, For the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. And he rejoices over you with singing. He rejoices over you. So I pray now, Father, that they would begin to rejoice with you because you sing over them with singing. I pray now, Lord, that you give them the visions from heaven to see the beautiful garments, the beautiful armor that they have upon them now in the name of Jesus. 
and that you give them new eyes to see who they are created in your image because they bear the characteristics, they bear the qualities, they bear the resemblance of God because they're created in your image, Lord. So I pray that truth be revealed to their soul tonight in Jesus' name. David. Amen. Joanna, would you do me a favor? And as you talked about Zephaniah 3, how the Lord sings over us, mm -hmm. would you just sing a cappella? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to sing this song that you are well. You are well. You are well. You are whole. You are healed. You are well. You are loved, you are clean, you are healed. The blood of the Lamb washes you clean. His love makes you whole. Receive it today. You are well. You are well, you are whole, you are loved. You are loved. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. Did you feel that on your side receiving? Uh, Joanne, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. Sing that one more time. And then you on the other side, I want you to take ownership of the song. Instead of hearing that you're well, you're healed, you're loved, I want you to come into agreement with it where you'll sing, I am well, I am healed, I am loved, I am whole. Joanne, would you lead them that way? Okay. Sing after me, guys. And the importance of this is you're coming out of agreement. Mm -hmm with the lie of the enemy and into the agreement with the truth of what God really says about you. Remember, right. he's never ever had a single bad thought about you. Therefore, we can't afford to have a bad thought about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Oh, we acknowledge our mistakes, but we are forgiven simply by doing a 180, mm -hmm. turning from it and turning to him. That's repentance. That's right. It's returning to the highest place with God, to re, to return to the pen, the penthouse, the highest place with God. Mm -hmm. Repentance is not a bad word. It's a good word. It's simply to change our mind, to think the way God thinks about the matter, come out of agreement with the wrong thinking and into agreement with his thinking. That's called the mind of Christ. So Joanna is going to lead you as you break ties with the old thinking, 180 repent, do a U-turn and come in to agreement with God's thinking about you. He's never had a bad thought about you. Joanna. That's right. So go ahead and sing with me. I am well, I am well, I am well, I am well. I am healed, I am whole, I am loved, I am healed. I am well, clean. I am clean, I am white as snow, I am, I am whole, I am loved, I am clean, I am healed, I am loved. You are loved. Say, I love myself. I love myself as Jesus loves me. I come out of agreement with the enemy that says I'm hated. And I come into agreement with the truth that I am loved because Jesus died for me. And forgiven. Tie in the forgiveness. Yeah. And you are forgiven. So say, I am forgiven. I am cleansed in the name of Jesus. I am white as snow. Forgive myself. And I forgive myself. Ooh, there it goes right there. You have to forgive yourself. I forgive myself in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you briefly uh, about the Freedom from Bondage series. It's a six CD series. 
and uh, it's uh, about hope deferred. Hope deferred makes the heart sick and soul ties. Some of you, like me, uh, had soul ties. We get tied in in our soul to something else. It's like a, a, a dog tied to a doghouse, to a leash. It can only go so far. It has all the abilities, but then all of a sudden, boom, that choke chain hits and it can't do all it's called to be. When you get set free from a soul tie, it could be to another individual. You could have a soul tie to, uh, you know, to your own football team that you, you follow if it's more important to you than God. And uh, you could have a soul tie with a family member. Some soul ties are healthy and they're good. Like Joanna and I, we have a soul tie with each other. The two become one flesh in marriage. Uh, that's why we leave our mother and father and cleave unto our wife and the two become one flesh. So I mean, you might still have a soul tie with your mother or father and, and God wants to set you free from that. It's good for a season, but then God causes you to, like an eaglet, to fly from the nest to be an eagle. So the hope deferred is disc one, soul ties is disc two, iniquity, the root cause of all sin is disc three and four, part one and two, and then from curse to blessing is disc five, and then communion, the meal it heals. So at Virtual Church Media, you can go online and get this. It's a six CD audio series called Freedom from Bondage, and as you listen, you will get so free. I want to address one more group of people. And the group of people that I want to address right now is those that are in abstinence. You're doing really, really well. And you're in church. You're, you're not involved in drug activity. You're not involved in the different kinds of things. You may not be involved in sexual sin outside of marriage. And that's great. You're abstaining from the very appearance of evil. But there's something in you. Mm -hmm. You're not free. There's an iniquity cord. Now, you don't want to admit it sometimes because you're doing so well. Let me give you the illustration. The person who's in abstinence versus deliverance is this. The person who's abstaining, not doing the activity, you were washed, you were cleansed, you were bought with a price. You're not doing it, but there's still something on the inside of you that wants to. It's iniquity drive. The Freedom from Bondage series will explain it. And people get set free in amazing ways as they listen to these audios and the Holy Spirit delivers the message in the midst of their mess and delivers them supernaturally. But here's the litmus test. When you're in abstinence versus deliverance, you might say something like, I haven't done this in 405 days. I haven't drank, smoked, or chew, or go with girls who do. It's been, I've, I haven't done it in 405 days. And literally, there's a little bit of pride in your voice about what you have been able to not do for 405 days or 121 days. But when you've been delivered, it's no longer, let me tell you what I haven't done in 121 days. 121 days ago, Jesus came and set me free. And I was set free from the bondage. I couldn't get myself free. Glory be to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He set me free. He can set you free. But in abstinence... I haven't done this for 121 days. Glory be to me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity, instead of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here's the other thing. When you haven't done these things and you've abstained from them, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But a better thing, higher truth, is deliverance. When somebody's in the same type of sin or bondage or addiction or affliction that you're abstaining from, you look down on them as if they're less. And you say, I thank God I'm not like others that are still bound. But when you're in deliverance, you know you didn't set yourself free. You look down upon them only to help pick them up mm -hmm. and to share with them, look, I couldn't get free either, but Jesus did it for me. He'll do it for you. Abstinence, you're abstaining, but you still want to. Deliverance, you're so free, you can't imagine ever going back to that lifestyle. One focuses on Jesus as the deliverer. The other focuses on your ability to abstain. Higher truth. Joanna? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And so I highly recommend the Soul Ties, the Bondage Breaker, the Freedom from Bondage series, because it's a process. It was a process for me. I didn't get free in one step. It was, I had to begin to recognize the trauma that was in my life. I had to then be, understand what the lies were, and that's what the Holy Spirit did. 
And then I had to come out of agreement with those lies. And so like we've shared today, I had, you had to come out of agreement and repent and then ask the Holy Spirit to give you freedom. And he will, because that's what his promise is. Jesus said, I came to set the captive free. I came to break the chains and the yoke of bondage. And the CD series that David has, has done has the anointing of God to do that and teach you how to do that. And so we encourage you to get that. Yeah. And we want to close in prayer today. Mm -hmm. And I want to speak to men that have been bound in the area of lust. One out of like four pastors still has a pornography problem. From the pulpit on Sunday morning they preached and they went to a pornographic website at least twice this week and intended to go there. We want to operate in freedom from bondage. So I want to speak to men that are still bound in the area of lust, pornography, sexual addiction. God will set you free in an instant like that. So if you just reach out and if you want to be free, God always promises to deliver us from our enemies. But never once did he promise to deliver us from our buddies. Is that thing still your buddy? Is it a false comforter? God will allow you to remain there. But he's never had a bad thought about you. Today he's reaching out to set you free in an instant by the power of the Holy Spirit. Will you reach out to him as your act of faith? Reach out your hand toward mine. This is just a prophetic act. And as you do that, God is going to reach and touch your hand and he's going to set you free. There it goes right now. I break mm -hmm. the iniquity cord of lust. I break your power. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. And I declare freedom from bondage in your life. Freedom from lust. Freedom from addiction command a brand new blood system. I command the spirit of torment in the night to be broken over your life right now. And I release the love of God. Seconds. I release the love of God. I release the love. There goes the love of God. The angels are ministering now. Be free. And if you'll just now just get up and do something different. I want you to get up, literally. Some of you are feeling the presence of God all over you. I want you to get up and take several steps forward and then turn around and look right where you had come from. There you go. Get up. Walk out of that situation a few steps. Turn around right now. And I want you to see you're no longer where you were at. God bless you. God bless you richly in Jesus' name. I'm David. And my wife, Joanna, here are beating. We love you in Christ. We'll see you next week.